Hello everyone, Jessica Kubasi here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how I take the studio portrait and give it like a kind of cool dreamy looking effect. The first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate the background layer. You can do this by dragging the layer and um, putting it into the new layer button down here. And after, after it's duplicated, go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now set it to about 10.6 pixels. It really depends on how big your image is, but um, you can kind of eyeball it. After that, just press OK, and then create a mask. And if you don't know how to use masks, I have a bunch of tutorials, so go check those out. Um, press con Command I to invert the mask. And then while the mask is inverted, you're going to want to have a white color um, in your foreground. And with a big fluffy brush, um, hardness about like 0 to 9% size, again depending on what picture you have, you're going to just softly go over the photo and make sure you, your opacity is about, it's like on the lower side, so like 20 to 30%. So we're just going to lightly go over some of her features. Now I'm not going to go too crazy with this. And normally I don't really do studio stuff, but my friend really wanted, needed a headshot, and so I was like, okay, I'll try. It can't be that hard. So, I mean, it didn't turn out too bad, actually, for only shooting in studio a couple of times. And if anyone's interested, what I use is a ring light. Well, the thing that you're seeing over here is a ring light. So, as you can see, you can kind of see that blur effect coming in now. And you can do more areas if you want, again, depending on your personal preference. I'll blur some areas down here. I think that looks pretty good so far. So now that we've kind of blurred this image, we're going to go to Layer, New Fill Layer, and then Solid Color. And you're going to want to choose like a dark red brown. Pick like that right there. That's actually. Well, I was going to say it's perfect, but then I'm going to change it. Okay, that's pretty good. So somewhere like a dark orange red. So press OK, and then we're going to go from normal to multiply. And we're going to set this to about 12%. So you don't have to be like perfect, like 12 on the dot. I, I just lied and I put 13 because I didn't want to listen to myself. <laughs> okay, so... The reason I put it to multiply is because it's now filling in. It's giving. It's going to give some more detail. Um, so now we are going to make a gradient. Go to this little tab over here. Go to gradient on the very bottom. And then you're going to want to choose a light pink gradient. And you're going to want it to go to a transparent gradient. So it's just going to be pink. And I'm going to see if I have any, which I should. Or it's hiding here somewhere. Okay, so crash course in making a gradient. Okay, I'm just gonna make a pink one right now. There we go. Again, this can be like any kind of pink, whatever kind of pink that you like. I love pink. There we go. Okay, so that that looks pretty good. No, oh, actually, I lied. Okay, this is good. I I won't change it. There we go. So, taking this pink gradient, you're gonna change it to radial. You're going to put this kind of up here, so it goes up here, kind of near her eye area. And then we're going to change the angle. Let's see. Let's do about, there we go, that is pretty good. To about like negative 10. And then the scale, let's make it a little larger. You can always, again, change this. And then press OK. And then we're going to go from normal to screen. And we're going to lower this to about 59% for now. So it kind of just adds a light. So we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. And this is going to be a fairly simple curve. Just going to add a couple points. So I kind of want it to look like that. It looks even cooler right now. Kind of like that. I don't want to do too much. That looks pretty good so far. 
And then we're going to go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then Selective Color. So for Selective Color, you want to go down to the, the yellows. And we're only going to touch the yellow. I'm going to make it literally like negative 9, that's it. <laughs> and then go down to White. For the first one, Cyan, we're going to go to negative 14. And then for Magenta, we're going to just add 5. And then negative 29 for the yellow. And as for black, we're going to do a negative 19. So even with that, it just brings out that highlight. And going from whites to neutrals, we're going to do a negative 1 for cyan. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's okay. Don't <laughs> um, 2 for magenta, negative 7, and then gonna higher up the black a little from yep the black okay and then we're gonna go actually to black and all I'm gonna do is touch the sign in this one it's gonna be about negative 18 there we go so just kind of adding that extra color in there and we're gonna bring this down to about 58 percent okay and then we're gonna make another set of curves so go to layer new adjustment layer and then curves again and then for RGB, we're just going to bring this up. You can't even see your face almost. <laughs> okay, and then we're going to go to green. We're not, we're not using any red in this one. And then as for green, we're going to bring this up. Kind of looks like this. So that it looks like this. And then as for blue... We're going to bring this whole thing up. You might want to make three points. And then you're going to bring this all the way down. About there. Curves is really awesome. I mean, you can use this for so... Like, some photographers, especially in fashion, just use curves. I don't... That's some skill right there. Okay. We're going to put it to about 59%. And now we're going to go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then vibrance. And we're just going to higher the vibrance to about 46. And then we're going to lower the saturation to about negative 30. And I'll probably be changing this later on, but for now we're just going to keep it like this. Next, go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. Yeah, again. And this one's just going to be um, an RGB. We're not adding any color. It's just that I wanted to add like some more contrast to the photo. And we're not, it's just a simple S, like a really loose S right there. And we're going to go all the way down to about 34%. Um, the last curves layer that we're going to make is, again, yet one more curve. But this time we're going to be getting rid of, well, we're going to be adding in some more blacks, actually. Um, making it more contrasted. Let's bring this up. Don't want it too much. Okay, and actually I'm going to go back to Vibrance and just pull down. I'm going to pull up. I'm sorry, pull up. So that it gives it just a little bit more color. And I'm going to lower the gradient fill. So I don't want it to be too overwhelming. Something about there. And actually I'm going to move it more to, towards the middle so that it hits both eyes. And it's not like one of her eyes is like black. And then one is that. <laughs> so now I'm going to go to my gradient map. And I'm going to choose a... Oh, wow, that's great. Oh, also you can, if you wanted to right now, you can just set it to black and white. That would look good too. But I'm going to choose a brown to yellow. This one looks pretty good. Um, brown to yellow, make sure that the lighter color is filling in all the highlights and skin color. And then just set it to color. And then if you just lower this whole thing, it kind of fills in all those. It makes it a nicer brown tone. It doesn't make it, it gets rid of all that pink. And if you wanted to, you can 
lower that. If you didn't want it so contrasted, I'm going through each layer just to make sure that I didn't add an unnecessary layer. There we go, that's that's pretty good. Okay, and then um, for my last one, I'm going to add another selective color. And then I'm going to go to blacks. And I'm just going to add like an extra black. Let's see. There we go. So this simply added that it filled in some of the blacks to be a little bit more violet, which I like in my photos. Now, um, if you really wanted to make it more like dreamy looking, what you can do is just make another layer at the very bottom right after we did that blur effect. Take a huge brush, make sure it's white, make turn it from normal to overlay, and kind of softly just swipe. If you're using a tablet, it really helps. So just kind of like swipe a little. And keep your opacity a little, like 20 to 30% would be really good. You kind of do that and you, I'm literally just pressing anywhere. This is really not good. It's not like an official technique, but it should be. So just randomly swishing. Kind of adding. You can even add over here, God. Just add over here if you want. Go crazy. Okay, no, don't do that. Okay. So you could add those light streaks if you really wanted to. But that's all there is to it. Let me show you guys the before and after. And I know there was a lot of curves layers. But it really did make a huge difference. Without those curves layer, um, it wouldn't give it that magical look. Um, I've tried to use things like levels and brightness and contrast. It just doesn't work the same way. So, just do that. And see what a big difference that gradient, that little gradient did. It's like a miracle worker. I'm actually going to lower it because I don't want it too contrast or too light up there. But it really does make a difference. If you were going for the harsher look, you could get rid of it, but I think it works really well. So that is really all I have for this tutorial. I hope that you um, took away something from this. Again, I know it's a lot of curves and everything, but a lot of fashion photographers use them. And I think they're extremely handy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and thank you guys so much for watching.